Hi, this message is for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Um, or you could be a cross watcher watching this for Aries, or also if you felt drawn to this message, it could be for you because you could have Aries somewhere else in your chart that it's affecting. So, um, okay, so what I'm seeing, I've already laid out the cards, and what I'm seeing here is that you, well, first of all, I just want to explain, um, there's a hair on my face. I want to explain that every situation that we come across or people that we deal with, if it's something in our experience, anything in our experience, there's, it's reflecting something in our inner experience that we're going through. And we may be unaware of what it is. So what I like to do is look at the outward story that you may be experiencing and then the inner try and determine and look at the inner experience that maybe you uh, want to look at. So what I'm showing is that there is something within you. With this medicine wheel we got reversed, okay, that needs healing. And we've got the queen of emotions, so it might have something to do with how you love um, yourself and others. And this could also represent a Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. We also have the Hermit reversed. And the Hermit is uh, the sign of Virgo. But what this is indicating is that you're not looking at yourself right now. You're not looking at loving yourself or how you love. Um, and you're needing to. Okay, so what I'm showing is that there is... We've got the sweat lodge. Now the sweat lodge is um, basically the universe is like bringing in this experience for you so that you can rid toxins from your body and rid toxins from your soul or whatever you want to call it, but it's like yourself, okay? Um, this is the part, this now as far as the tarot clarifying these cards, I had a harder time with this, these specific tarot cards, trying to understand exactly what it was that you were needing to clarify, but, or what you're trying to see. Um, but what I'm showing, we've got the Page of Swords here. Um, this could be a message coming to you, but more what I'm looking at is that she's got these glasses on and she's holding them up and it's like she's got really clear vision but if you look through the visions at her it's like her eyeballs are super clear so it's like she can see herself really clearly okay and this is how it's like a way this is how you're going to know what it is that you need to rid from yourself the toxin that you have within you and we've got the queen of um, pentacles or the queen of materials in this deck and then the four of wands is reversed so this represents um, like the motherly card she's but she's the mother of the material realm so she's got her shit really together. She looks nice. She has nice things. She has her finances in order and her kids in order. Like she's got all that. And it can be, this can represent male or female, by the way. It also can represent a Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo if you're dealing with one. But um, there is the four of wands with it being reversed indicates like a move of home or um, a marriage or family that broke up. Um, and what I'm seeing is that it has something to do with that, that you are looking at, um, within you and outside of you. Okay. Um, now I'm showing that this, the muse of inspiration or muse of materials also came out. So this is indicating to me that like this 
um, toxin that you need to sweat out is like basically your gateway into having this muse of materials. Like um, the muse of materials is um, basically in the, let me just read you actually. I think I can do that better than trying to explain what the muse of materials is. Abundance, earth energy, it's like dirt magic. Um, journey, it's the journey to creating prosperity, being able to provide for those who you love, um, grounded into the earth, gratitude, comfort, wealth, hap health, happiness. So it's like you can have all of that by going through this sweat lodge, basically, and um, getting rid of that that part of you, that part of you that's blocking the the thing that's in the way. Um, now, how you're going to do this is you need to take on uh, this witness energy, and I think this is one that I actually wanted to read to you from the. No, I didn't. I don't think I did actually. Let me just take a look at it, and I will know. <laughs> can't remember. Um, well, let me read the first part of it, actually. So this is the essence of this card, okay? The witness observer, without engaging, engaging in any action, by cultivating inner stillness, we are able to assess any situation from a higher perspective and make better decisions. And this, I can tell, is what you're being asked to do in the situation that you're in or that's coming up. When we can be present for someone else's difficulties with stillness, then we are able to truly hear them and give better advice. Sometimes we can be so still that we are a mirror for each other. Then through our presence, they receive their own answers. So I'm showing that there's a person or a situation coming into your um experience that is going to be really difficult for you to handle and because it's going to um, cause emotions to rise up in you so you could um, react from those emotions in a lot of different ways you can um, want to like oh let me take care of you I'm so sad for you like that you know or you can get um, angry because you're trying to override those emotions that are coming up in you. Um, but I'm showing that this situation, it's like you were in a situation that you probably felt st stuck in. It was causing no movement, no progress, no... Um, it, it was just something that was stalled, okay? And you had a hard time... Um, letting it go or letting this uh, whatever situation or person go but the tower came in and basically the tower this tower is reversed so again it it's like you were aware of it so it wasn't shocking to you it was like could have been a decision that you made or something um, but you were aware of it but it caused your whole situation to change from what you were in or what you were doing, okay? Um, but it took a lot of strength to do that. Now, this is also the card of Leo, could be have to do with Leo. Also, this is the card of um, Cancer, could have to do with can a Cancer. Oh, and then we also got Death, which is Scorpio. Um, so what I'm showing, though, is that um, this person or situation is like going to present something to you with a, like a message to you or something and hold on I'm just seeing okay seeing which where where I want to go next um and you are remembering how you were in this like 
stalled or stuck place with this situation, okay? Um, and it's like, I see judgment, like someone, like uh, judgment from others or you're judging someone maybe because you want to be mad at them. Um, when, I, when I'm looking at it, like I'm thinking about myself, when, um, for instance, like, say you are wanting something really bad, and then finally you're just like, fuck it, it's never going to happen, like if it's a person or something, and then they come in and ask you for a favor or something, like, say they were blocking you or whatever, and then they come in with a soppy, sad story and ask you for a favor, and it's like, you have these emotions in you that wants to help them and console them, but you're pissed off because why do you want to help them when like they caused all this pain for you, right? Okay, so that's, it It doesn't have to play out exactly like that, but that's kind of what I think of when I see this, okay? So um, I got the beauty way and I've got it reversed. And this message I do want to read to you because this will explain a lot what I'm seeing here. Well, where did it go? Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. So the beauty way is both the path um, you travel and a daily practice. The path is where you choose to perceive only beauty before you, behind you, and all around you as a as you journey through life. The practice is where you take action to bring beauty to every situation you are in. When things get ugly, you act to bring integrity and peace to a difficult encounter. When, some, when everyone else perceives only darkness, you point out light, the light and help uncover the hidden treasures. So with it being reversed, it says... Stop trying to fix relationships that you believe are broken. Recognize that things are exactly as they need to be in the moment and acknowledge the inherent beauty in that. When you understand this, you will be able to bring about the change you want. Do not engage in gossip about the darkness and the flaws of others. Be careful not to be seduced by the superficial beauty of a project or relationship you are toying with unless you are willing to pay a price for it later. So... What I'm getting from this is that you may be tempted to, um, like if you have those kind of emotions of uh, wanting to help someone, say, like having empathy for someone, you may be tempted to uh, blame them, judge them, um, be mad at them, or even if they weren't coming in, but it's like you want to judge them to cope with your feelings of judgment against yourself. And um, let, let me explain what I mean by that. So, um, basically, so like, say that you have a friend and say they betray you in some way, okay? You have all these hurt feelings like, and the first thing you do is, how could they do that? I did this for them. I did that for them. I was this for them. I was that for them. And and you just want to be so pissed off and like almost hate that person. And the reason why we do that is because um, we feel like we made a mistake in loving that person in giving to that person, in being a good person to that person. And rather than looking at ourselves in trying to understand what's going on within us, we want to be pissed, like direct our energy at being mad at that person and blaming that person and not looking at ourselves. So that's what I'm kind of seeing is that a temptation to judge another so it could be from you judging another or someone judging you and then you wanting to judge them back kind of thing, okay? Um, now, what I'm getting from this, though, 
is that with the beauty way too, is that there is conflict within you that you're judging yourself for and you might not even notice it. Um, I'm seeing that you in some way are trying to, I'm seeing you covering it up by trying to make yourself look beautiful in other ways. So it could be like outer beauty, like your appearance. And there's nothing wrong with making yourself look beauty beautiful, like with outer beauty. But what I'm trying to get you to look at is what's your intention behind it. And it could be subconscious. Um, Cause I'm seeing like a covering up of what you feel. Like blinding yourself by trying to cover it up with anger, trying to cover it up with beauty specifically. Um, so let's go back to um, the situation and then I'll get to the, what I'm seeing is like the solution to it. Um, yeah, because what I'm seeing is that this is probably a person because I've got the soulmate card, okay? This person, it's like you were happy with some person. Like they, you felt they were your soulmate. It could have been family. It could be family that's like looking, judging you in a way that you know isn't true about yourself. Because um, this is like the joy, happiness card. And then we got the three of voices, heartbreak. So this is something that you, you thought was all this and led to your heartbreak. Okay, and it was all also clarified by the three of inspiration, you going a different way. So you went a different way than these people, this family, these beliefs, or a person. You went a different way, um, and it caused you heartbreak, but it caused it could have caused the others heartbreak too. And so now we, we've got this like judgment coming in, okay? But one thing to remember is that like it came out with this archetype card, the river. And what the river does is the river is like um, it smooths out our edges. And so this situation or this, um, this person that's coming back in is doing that so that you can look at how you were... Um, that toxin that's in you, how you're holding yourself back by masking it with this beauty or this anger, okay? So that you can smooth out these edges with the river. Uh, it's being the river for you so that you can smooth out those edges and it's just going to bring you more happiness, okay? Um, I forgot. Hold on, let me... Let me pull out. The next card we got is the village. Okay, yeah, I remember now. Okay, yeah, we got the village. Okay. This is what makes me think it might be like you're an outcast of your family. Like, um, for me, for instance, um, I grew up in the LDS Mormon religion. And I left that religion when like, you know, 16 years ago or so. And um, I know that a lot of people, when they leave that religion, they feel like an outcast because, you know, people are like, why would you do that? I can't believe you did it. How did you ever do that? And there's people always praying for your return. They think you're, you know, uh, going down a bad path and they just imagine all these bad things like happening if to you and for you and it's, it's really hard because it makes you feel like uh, they're judging you, right? Okay. So, basically, I'm showing that, like, um, this village, it's like you went outside the village walls, okay? And so, you, with the ace of emotions in the world, I'm seeing two messages. You both left the village um, where you got your love and support. You, you left it to go into this outside world. 
to, to make basically your your village bigger. <laughs> if that makes any sense. You wanted a, vi a bigger village. You wanted to expand it. Um, oh, I almost forgot. It looks like you were listening to your intuition with when doing this. And um, it could have been a secret. But I'm showing that you are going to find like that bigger village, that, that soul family, I guess. Okay. Um, but part of that is releasing this toxin that's in you. And the next, we got the mask. And I talked about the mask a little bit. Um, that's the mask of your anger, the mask of your... Um, how you are trying to make yourself look beautiful or good because you don't feel that way inside about yourself. Sometimes, and, and there's two different ways that we can feel like this. One way is because of conditioning, like growing up, that if you are a certain way or behave a certain way, then you're not a good person. And so that's how you're judging yourself. Um, the other way is that you may have been acting on a feeling an emotional lack or a hole in yourself. And so you did things that were against what you believe inside are good. So there's two ways to, to see that. And it could be in either situation, either way. Okay. But I'm showing, uh, we've got the six of inspiration and the seven of, um, emotions reversed. So there's two ways. I'm seeing this again in the external world and the internal world. So I'm seeing that you're trying to project yourself as this because you feel like this, which is um, emptiness inside. Like not being able to, um, like you're putting all these fish out there to mask the emptiness. Okay. But then also this person or situation that you're seeing is you're seeing them as wearing a mask. You're like, I thought you were this, and now I see that you're this. You're empty. So the mask is falling off with this Ten of Swords. Now, like I said, this inner world is reflecting the, into the outer world. And so when we can address our inner world, our outer circumstances will reflect that. Okay? So that's why I'm trying to point this out. Um, okay, so the next card I got is the comic. And the comic, it seems like there was another card and it's missing now. Um, the comic I've got clarified by the Ace of Materials and the Awakening Reversed. So, um... The comic is like the laughter, jokester, fun. It's like the comic finds situations and finds the humor in them, okay? So what I'm showing is it's like you have this false sense of security um, in, in this situation that you had in the past. Um, but with the awakening, it's like, now you see that it was a false sense of security. And with it being reversed, it's like almost like you're seeing the shadow part of you. And I know that sometimes when you have that awakening, there's that feeling of like, oh my God. Like you have that judgment on you, yourself, for realizing what, what the heck you did. So a lot of a lot of times what we do end up doing is we will behave a certain way and, and it's innocent to us, right? Because we don't know. And even if like say even if we're told it's wrong, that doesn't mean we know it's wrong. Being told does not make you know. Knowing is something that you like feel instinctly, intuitively from the inside. Um and you can be told something all your life and then one day just wake up and understand and be like, oh. 
that's when that feeling comes in. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm getting from that. And because you're going to have this epiphany, um, you're being told basically to find you the humor in it, actually, and and have a positive outlook. And you got the innocence card too. So you're being told to not judge the other person or situation as bad. Does that make sense? As, or any type of judgment, any type of way. Instead of judging it as like, oh, that was so bad, or I was so bad, or that person was so bad, or they are so bad. It's it's telling you to look at the innocence in how they are behaving, how you are behaving, because there was an unawareness of what um, was really going on on the deeper subconscious level. Because if, if people are judging you or you're judging other people or they're judging themselves, it's usually because it's because we are unaware. Like we're unaware of every of uh it's just the deeper aspects of it all and um so it's uh, basically telling you to no you don't need to be you don't need to like carry around that anger if you have anger you don't need to make yourself look good got by gossip or by appearances because um you are good. There's an innocence in you. There's an innocence in that person and what they did wrong and what you did wrong. There's, or those people, if they're judging you. Um, let me read this message and then I'll do the last few cards. I'm actually going to stop the video because it's going to stop anyway. And then I'll yeah, put them together. Okay, so we got innocence. Okay, this says the simplest gestures of love and respect can prevail over even the toughest of hearts. Okay. Um, in this card, the lightness of the aura around Ganesha portrays innocence. By being soft and still, you can give the universe the opportunity to assist you in creating your desires. Be willing to release any cynicism. Have you noticed yourself becoming increasingly critical over time as you gather more experience sometimes the familiarity of a situation can cause you to lose touch with your innocence it is only natural to expect similar outcomes as you have had in the past when similar situations present themselves in your life don't forget though that change and transformation are always possible you are being offered an opportunity to approach this situation with renewed peace if you are making changes to your job situation, relationships, or even the direction of your path, approach this with a sense of exploration and excited curiosity of a child. Be willing to let go of the preconceived ideas that have developed over time in your mind. Allow your heart to be centered in a place of peace. Every day, call on Ganesha for guidance to renew your mind and refresh your thinking. With Ganesha's assistance, contemplate each situation you encounter. Ask Ganesha to support you. Remember to pray for your freedom and fears, worries, and unhealthy obsessions that might control your thoughts and harm your soul. Be accountable for your decisions and the results. Just knowing that you are responsible will assist you to take decisions seriously and with greater consideration. And I am, and then lastly, this almost looks like it doesn't have a whole lot to do with that story. But I'm showing um, the father. And this could be um, someone coming in. But the father represents like the protector. And like the like of your survival to like survival. And, and like nurturing that you would get from a father figure okay and you can see that it's like both spiritual and material like okay and what i'm showing is that what i believe is happening is that by by you releasing that toxins you get to enjoy 
there's other people that are coming in that will act, will um, spiritually support you and materially support you. Okay, so it could be just one person or it could be multiple people or it could be um, like abundance, like if you're like uh, lacking money or something like that. And it's coming in as the wheel, like the wheel of fortune. So it's like this abundance coming into you. And it was actually there all along. You just couldn't see it. Because um, with this four cups is upright. It's like you're looking at this sad, empty cup, and down below it, see these two people kissing? So yeah, with it being reversed, it's like you're seeing what you didn't see before. You're no longer blinded with the two of sources, so voices being reversed. Your heart's no longer blocked. And you are putting, planting seeds for this abundance coming in. And this is going to bring in a lot of happiness. This is happiness, family, joy, emotional fulfillment for you. So that's what I have for you, Aries. Um, I actually did a video for you guys like a few days ago, but then I don't know what happened to it. And it was talking about someone from your past coming in and seducing you. So <laughs> um, I'm just saying it, it's probably related to something like that. But um, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, I really appreciate any likes, subscribes, and shares. And I will see you next time. If you want a personal reading, you can email me down below. Okay, thanks. Bye.